Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to discuss about the HC23 gateway configuration. So what all are the commands we can use on our gateway while configuring the H323 gateway. So in my previous lecture, I discussed about the H323 call flow and how we can add the H323 gateway on our CUCM. So I just uh, um, had a detailed discussion on that H323 gateway on my in my previous lecture. So if you have missed that one, then please go to my channel and uh, check that H323 call flow and the configuration on CUCM and then move on to this lecture. So in this lecture, I am going to discuss about the configuration of voice gateway for H323 PRI. So what all are the things we needed for that? First, you need to go to the uh, router and then you just put this command config that, that is configuration terminal. You just uh, uh, need to uh, come into the, I can say, in the configuration terminal so that you can use the, you can just put the all other commands. So now you just need to enter into the VoIP mode that is voice services VoIP through this command. You can enter into the voice services VoIP mode. Then you need to push these commands, allow connections H323 to SIP and allow connections SIP to H323. So it will allow both the connections like there if there is a request coming from H323, it can convert it to SIP. If there is a request coming in from SIP, then it can convert it to the H323. So you need to allow these connections on the gateway. The next part, which is the main thing, the, these three parts, that is H323 gateway, VoIP bind, source address, and then this would be an IP. So if you remember, we added H323 gateway on our CUCM and I gave the IP in the device name. So you need to add the same IP here as well, the same IP address which you added on the gateway. Then the next part is dial peers. You need to create the dial peers on your gateway as well. So if if like uh, if you lose if you lose the connection uh, on the CUCM or your CUCM is down, but your HC23 is a peer to peer protocol. So it should have everything configured on gateway as well. If somebody like loses the connection uh, on the CUCM, then it will just take all these things from the gateway and your call will go. So for that, you need to create the dial peers and dial peers for the dial peers. You need to just put this commands dial peer voice and then the VoIP. So this XXXX should be any random number. You can take it and then you need to create dial peer voice XXXX ports. So ports dial peer will be created between your gateway and your PSTN and this VoIP dial peer will be created between IP networks, I can say, so not the uh, CUCM and gateway. We can create between gateway and the cube as well, or the not the or the gateway and the, your IT service provider as well. If he's running everything on SIP, then if there is a IP to IP connectivity, then you can create the VoIP dial peers on that part as well. Mainly, this VoIP dial peer voice VoIP would be between IP to IP connectivity, like between your CUCM and your gateway, and then. Next, this uh, dial peer voice ports connectivity would be between IP network to the PSTN network. In this, you can just create this dial peers, dial peers, uh, dial peer voice, and this would be any random number and then the ports. So here we can see uh, like all these commands, how we can use it. So we can just put this command card type that is a T1 card and controller, like all these things. Here you can see PRI group time slots 1 to 24. Like if we are using a T1 card, T1 PRI, then it would be a maximum of 24. So what it's saying PRI group time slots, it means it defines T1 PRI as a PSTN signaling. Okay. And then we have this interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 23. That is mainly used for the signaling. So we can say that is a D channel. If you remember uh, your T1 has 23 B plus D, that is D channel. So this is one, the T channel that is 23 D channel and its configuration. Then we have these things that is ISDN switch type, primary NI and ISDN incoming voice. So these are the, these are the things like switch type, you will get it from your service provider and you need to push this, you need to just put the same configuration on your gateway to make a communication between your gateway and the PSTN. If this is if this switch type is different on your side and switch type is different on the ISP side, then 
maybe your uh, PRI is not uh, will not show like an active one. It it may be show your your PRI is deactivated. So after that, you have main things that is dial peers, that is dial peer voice one VoIP and the port style peers. So VoIP dial peer would be between IP to IP connectivity. Port style peer would be between IP to PSTN. So what it's saying dial peer voice one VoIP. That means this is a VoIP dial peer. What it's defining, it's defining HTTP 3, 3 call properties. Now we are defining the call properties. So we have this destination pattern two dot 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 dot. That means this is a destination pattern for digit matching. So if there is a call, uh, if somebody is calling like 2000 till 29999, it will take this destination pattern. 2 dot 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 means 2000 to 2999. So it will take this dial peer if somebody is calling between 2000 to 2999. And then what would be the session target? Session target IPv4 20.1.1.1. This would be your CUCM address because you are creating a VoIP dial peer. VoIP dial peer you are creating between CUCM and the gateway. So that's why you need to put this session target IP4 from where that call is coming. You need to put that IP address. As you can see, session target pointing to IP address of remote S323 peer that is CUCM's IP address. We can use this one as well in the incoming calls as well. So if you are like, if you want to create the same wave dial pair for the incoming calls, which is coming on CUCM, you can do that as well. You can just put one command here as well on this dial pair that is incoming call number dot. And what dot means in that incoming call number, that means UCM will accept everything on that dial pair. Everything. So one dot means everything. I will create some videos on this dial peers in detail as well. So after that, we have this codec G711 Mulo. So I like what will be the codec it will support on this wave dial pair. And then we have a DTMF relay S245 alphanumeric. So this is the use G711 Mu codec. Default is G729, but you can change it like this one. Like we just change it to change it to G711 Mulo. Then uh, this one command, this this is enabling the DTMF relay using S245 alphanumeric. Default is disabled. So now we have the port style peer, the same one. That is dial peer voice nine ports. Ports is between IP and the PSTN connectivity. As you know, it is written. Port style peer pointing to PRI with destination pattern. Uh, let's discuss about this destination pattern. So here destination pattern 9T. 90 means everything starts with nine and then any any number like if there is a number like a 10 digits number 11 digits 12 digits number it will take everything nine t means every number which is starting with a nine destination pattern nine t then there is a command direct inward dial that is a did command and then from which port it should go that one is port zero slash zero slash zero colon 23 like on this port, our PRI is terminated. And from this PRI, from this port, which is connected on the gateway, my call should go to the PSTN. That is from, that is with the help of this dial peer. Then we have uh, these things, how we can uh, connect these dial peers with the configurations. Like these all are the commands. So as you can see it here, the command that is actually gateway VoIP source or VoIP interface and H323 gateway VoIP bind source address. This is the command which I was discussing earlier. Don't confuse with this IP address like here we have 1.1.1.1 and in my previous lab I just configured 10.10.1.1.1. So it's not something like uh, I'm just taking everything from this uh, slide. I just I just showed you like how we can create it and this IP address should be same on your CUCM as well as in this command http gateway VoIP bind source address. What it's saying, it forces this gateway to use the loopback interface for all ht 3 signal and the RTP traffic. Then we have this thing that is voice class H3231 and then we have a H225 timeout setup. This is a timeout setting. So if there is like, a, if your H323 
uh, peer is not responding in this particular time like you just we just entered the five year if it is not responding to this peer then it will check out for the next available dial peer so let's see it says s225 setup redundancy yes try a second wipe dial peer if the remote s223 peer doesn't respond in five seconds so if it is not responding in five seconds it should reach out to another dial peer and how it will reach out to another dial peer that is the main configuration here now we can see we just uh, pref we just entered this command voice class s 231 and we set up this one then we set up this command voice class codec 1 and then we will just enter the codex codec g 729 r8 and the preference would be first so every call will go which have so every dial peer which have this voice class codec 1 will pref will give the preference to this codec g729r8 and then it will give the preference to the g711 mula because this is a preference 2 what it's saying s245 codec negotiation flexibility negotiate to g729 if possible otherwise g711 mula is okay as well so now what we need to do we need to put these voice class codec 1 command and voice class sg231 command to our dial peers and how we can do that we can just go to our dial peer voice one voip which we created destination pattern this one same and then we have a session target ipv4 20.1.1.1 and then here we can put the commands voice class sc231 and the voice class codec one these one so now if somebody is reaching out to this dial peer and we can see okay sc231 voice class s 3231 is here and but it is not responding so it will check okay the timer is five seconds but it is not responding then what it will do it will reach out to the another dial pair so here first dial pair is this one and this is our second dial pair so here you can see it is written as a preference one and nothing is written here as well here so if nothing is written that means the highest priority so the first of priority would be given to this dial pair and then the next priority would be this dial pair so if user is on this dial peer and voice class s 231 is already written over here and the timeout would be five seconds but your h323 peer is not responding so after five seconds it will reach out to the another dial peer that is this one because the next preference would be this style peer. it will reach out to this one it will check the destination by transaction target everything and you can see it here if it doesn't respond that means there will be an issue with the cucm address or maybe your CUCM is not up. So that's why in another dial peer, I'm just adding a, a secondary CUCM or I can say the secondary subscriber 20.1.1.2. So once it reaches to this dial peer, it will check HT231, it will check the timer. And after that, uh, it should respond in five seconds because it's a new CUCM. It means it, it can be up, it might be up at that point of time. If it doesn't up, if, it, if, it's, if this uh, CUCM is not up at that point, then it will reach out to the third dial peer which which is having a preference of two as it is written it is a preference one then it will reach out to the other dial peer as well so the same things voice class hc231 voice class codec one is written over here in the same way as you can see in this as well try this dial peer first if two dot 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 is match because it has the highest preference that is a zero zero means default preference value and therefore invisible and reach out to this one if the ip host in dial peer one doesn't respond to s225 in five seconds then try this dial peer as it has lower preference than this one then we have these commands which we can uh, use it on our gateway to check all other things like this one show call active voice brief what it will show it will show you these things like telephony call lags sc 3 call legs, total call legs, all these things it will show up here. You can use all these commands as well. Show call active voice. It will give you everything related to this one. IP address, remote IP address, UDP port number, testing, remote signaling IP address, remote signaling port, everything it will show up with this command. Show call active voice. After that, you can use this command that is uh, debug CCH323. And after this S323, you can use this one, H225, H245, or all these as well. Debug CC, H323, all, RAS, and XE capacity. You can use all these commands. Debug CC, H323, H224, H245. 
then you can use debug as 245 ESNL and debug as 245 events command as well. So there are so many commands which you can use. So main command which we can use it for the debugging purpose that is debug voice CKP in out debug voice CKP in out this command you can use it if you want to, if you are like going to troubleshoot anything related to the call if there is an issue in that particular call then you can use this command that is debug voice CKP in out it will tell you everything everything then we have this question that is a HC23 gateway troubleshooting case study. So in this example, as you can see, what it's saying, it's saying uh, this HQ IP phone users have reported that they cannot receive calls from PSTN. They can call out to any PSTN number, also calls to and from the branch from works fine. Find out why inbound calls from PSTN to HQ IP phones failed. You must support your findings with debug or trace analysis. So here you can see uh, what it's saying, the outgoing call from this IP phone via like this uh, gateway to the PSTN is working. Calls from this IP phone to this via this WAN branch router to this IP phone is also working. But calls from this outside phone that is an external phone, which is coming to PSTN gateway and to the phone is not working. These calls are not working. So we need to identify with the help of debugs like how we can trace it, how we can check it, why the calls is not calls are not coming on the CUCM. Like if call is not coming on your CUCM, then obviously it is not going to the your phone. So if calls are not even coming on CUCM, then we need to check everything on the gateway as well as on your CUCM. So let's check it how we can uh, check the traces and how we can do all the troubleshooting. We need to start it. We need to like uh, started from the basic things, what all we can check it. So this one, the same thing like HQIP phones, inbound calls from PSTN do not work, but outbound calls work and at quarter IP phones to branch IP phones work. Okay. Now what we need to do, we need to just narrow down our uh, like approach, how we can approach the things. So this is the one thing like uh, there is, this is a connection between phone and uh, your CUCM that is an SCCP connection. And the connection from CUCM to gateway, it will be an HC23 because we are running an HC23 gateway. And this is our RTP stream, which is happening between the phone and the end device. And this is our PRI, which is between gateway and our PSTN. So what would be the first thing we need to check? So we know like calls are not coming from external. So like if somebody is calling from PSTN, then uh, calls are not coming. Then what we need to do, we need to check first thing first, whether that call is coming on your gateway or not. And how you can check it? As you know, PRI is your point of first point entry for any PSTN call. So you need to check on the PRI, whether that call is coming it on or not. So we, you can push the command debug ISDN Q931 and it will show you whether the call is coming or not. So after this command, if you see, okay, my call is coming, then you can say if the call came in on the PRI, then you need to check whether it is matching any dial peers or not. Because if your dial peers are not created, like if your incoming dial peer is created, but your destination pattern dial peer is not created, then it will not go to CUC. And how you can check the dial peers, you can just push this command, debug VoIP dial peer in out. It will tell you like what all are the dial peers which are coming into the picture. So if you are able to identify the correct dial pair, like it's showing, okay, dial pair is created and it is matching it. If the correct dial pair is created, then it needs to check whether that H225 setup message is being sent to CUCM or not. And how you can check it? You can just put this command debug HCC H323 H245 or debug H224 H225 events. So with the help of these commands, you will be able to identify what is the issue and what is happening over that code. So let's discuss about these commands. So as soon as you put this command that is debug ISDN Q931 on your gateway, what do you need to check whether the call is coming or not? So once you put this command debug ISDN Q931, it is saying receiving setup. It shows the calling party number. That is this one. It shows the called party number. That is this one. It means the call is coming. Call is coming on my gateway. 
So if call is coming on my gateway, then what would be the next step? I need to check whether the dial pair is matched or not. And we know, okay, my dial pair is matched because we already checked. Then what we need to do? We need to check whether it is sending the S225 event, S225 events messages on the CUCM or not. And how we can check it? We can just put this command debug cc h323 h225 on the h323 gateway and on this command what do you need to check you need to check mainly this source address so this source address as you can see 1.1.1.1 and the destination address is 20.1.1.1 this is your uh, cucm ip address this is your source address which you created on your gateway that means everything is configured correctly on the gateway side if it is saying this source address 1.1.1.1 which you created the destination address you know this is 20.1.1.1 so that means everything is created perfectly fine on your gateway now you need to see like what's but what is the issue at this stage because everything is like perfectly fine so the next step would be you need to check on your s 3 gateway which you configured on your cucm whether there is a whether this uh, source address is matched or not because if this source address is not matched the call will not come let's see so here you can see here it is written over in this so here you can see in the screenshot as well when we check in our st 3 gateway it is saying like uh, the device name is 10.1.1.1 but what you configured on your gateway was 1.1.1.1 so your gateway is sending source address as 1.1.1.1 but your uh, like h323 is expecting the call actually h323 expecting the h225 setup which is from the gateway to come from this ip address that is 10.1.1.1 but the gateway is sending from 1.1.1.1. So that's why there is a mismatch and your gateway will not accept anything. Like gateway doesn't know where is 10.1.1.1. So that's why it is saying H323 gateway sends H225 setup message to CUCM using source IP address, this one, which we just checked in our, this one, in our, this command. The source address is 1.1.1.1. And what your CUCM is expecting, because you created 10.1.1.1, so your CUCM is expecting the setup message to come from this IP address. But as you know, you haven't configured this IP address. So that's why nothing comes up on the gateway. So CUCM, that's why CUCM just closed the connection because nothing, nothing comes up. So CUCM doesn't know whether there is a call or not. If you just change, if you can just change this device name, from 10 to the 1.1.1.1 the call will happen and if you change this void bind source address from 1.1.1.1 to 10.1.1.1 then also it will work that depends like what all ip address you want to configure it so i hope you learned something from this one from this scenario as well as the uh, commands on the gateway what all commands we need what all dial peers we need to create it between CUCM and the gateway, whether it's a void dial peer or a port style peer or the dial peer between IP network to the PSTN network, what dial peer we need to create it. I hope you learned something from this video. And if you really liked it, please like, share and subscribe my channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon so that you will be able to receive the notifications of all my upcoming videos. Thank you.